I'm doing the keyword research because nothing really turns out as cool as you want it to without some really good research, without business research. So that is how I start all my businesses. It's how I start all my work. And the cool thing is, is that I really see so much potential. But the hard part is explaining it to people what I'm doing in a way that makes sense to other people so that they want to buy my program. But I think the key things are uh, you're going to have a you know, monetized YouTube channel, monetized podcast, and you're going to become a self-published author. And they're all going to work together, though. It's all going to be like in harmony with you expressing who you are. And you're, and you're going to have a website and an email list. It's like, fuck, so powerful, so juicy, so much potential. And I'm putting it all together for you so that I can help people, you know, be a creator, set themselves free, make lots of money doing it, and just have a, you know, step-by-step proven system for growth so that people aren't just shooting in the dark. So let me just talk a little bit about the craziness, though, of doing the keyword research to start it off. So I'm thinking with the end in mind, right? So the end in mind is having a published book so that I'm an authority in what I'm talking about. Now, I just bought this thing called Publisher Rocket, having a lot of fun. And the key things are to first find a category on Amazon where your book is going to be able to succeed. Because if you can't get in the top of a certain category on eBooks and uh, Amazon paperback books, then you're just not gonna make any money because no one's gonna know your book exists. Now, this is important because you want to, first of all, know what category your book's gonna be in before you kind of start. And then you wanna know what keywords you're gonna go after before you start as well. And then you're also going to want to know what kind of Amazon ads you're going to go after, right? So this is all things we have to think about. You know, the book. I mean, at the same time, we want our content and our book to be really good. Okay, so the book that we're making is a representative of us. But at the same time, I really want to start this publishing business. And the best way to get started with anything is just to get on the field. You know, get in the game. Get on Amazon. Get in there, okay? So first I'm looking for the beautiful keywords for my self-published book. I found some gold in YouTube books. I found some gold in marketing books. I mean, if I made like the world's best marketing book, like the best one I see is making like $10,000 a month from one book. Now I'm not expecting anything like that, but crazy. So cool, I never knew people were making so much money with books. So the first process, right? Creating the keywords for my book, right? The next step is I want to have my website rank for keywords for that book kind of before the book comes out even. Because if my website ranks for the keywords for that book before it comes out and then I can put the book for sale on those pages, that just doubles my money. That just gives me so much more potential, right? So what I'm doing then is I go from my book, then I go to my website, and I'm trying to make sure that the keywords for my book, there's keywords that I can make for my website and I can rank it, and I can. I can do that for anything because there's always gonna be low-hanging fruit, you know, where you can make a lot of money. And I mean, I'm finding them all the time, especially in these bigger niches like YouTube and marketing, right? There's, there's always gonna be, you know, health niches and. I was even looking at enlightenment and personal development niches, and there's just so niches, sorry, so much potential to make a lot of money. But I want the ultimate like wham, bam, super slam whenever I put out a book. I want to rank for the keywords for my book. I wanna have my website, maybe even have a course for my book, right? That's the ultimate dream. That's super passive income. Cause then think about this. Not only will I have ranking pages that get a lot of traffic, but on those ranking pages, I'll have a course that I sell, and then I'll also have a book that I sell. And the more books that I sell, the higher my book is gonna be ranked in Amazon, and the more courses I sell, the more my influence will grow, and the more money I'll make. 
So that's like the super trifecta, but it gets better. So when I'm doing my key re research for my website to rank, I'm also looking at keywords that I can rank in YouTube. I'm plugging them into TubeBuddy and vidIQ, and I'm seeing what are some YouTube videos that I could rank that'll also make me able to gain a lot of traction because I can rank a YouTube video a lot faster than I can necessarily rank my website because my website's relatively new. That'll change though, and I'll be able to rank websites too, but it's just adding, you know, <laughs> wood to the flame. So these are all awesome because imagine if I have courses to sell, right, and a book that I have my website ranking for, that I have my book ranking for, that I have my YouTube videos ranking for, right? And then the final piece of the puzzle is podcasts. <laughs> now, I can rank podcasts super easy. So as soon as I have all those keywords in a silo, what a silo is, is it's a lot easier to rank if you have a structure, right? Google started because they wanted to um, organize everything on the internet and everything in the world. So it only makes sense because you, what you do is you have your hardest to rank for keywords or the keywords that are going to have the most search volume at the top of the silo, at the tip. Okay, and then you make all the rest of the articles the next hardest, the next hardest, and then you have supporting articles so that all the link juice flows to the top. So you want to put all these keywords that you find at first into silos. Okay, once you have these silos set up, now that's how you're going to structure your content, okay? So you have the top of the silos for your website, you have the top of the silos for your YouTube channel, you have the top of the silos, you know, and this is basically your war map for ultimate success for evergreen creator life, you know, and it's just like so fun. <laughs> and then you got to do the hard work though. But I mean, once I have it all lined up, right, and I'll make a sheet for, for everybody that's interested, and you'll be able to do this too. I think I'm just gonna focus on the evergreen aspects, right? The evergreen aspects are my website, um, the book, my YouTube channel, and the podcast, and my email subscribers, okay? All the extra stuff like Facebook, Twitter, like those all just get syndicated, and I'm not gonna focus so much on growing those, but growing those can be very powerful as well. But I'd rather not put my energy into those things. I'd rather put my energy into the things that are going to be around for a while. Pinterest is one that's kind of evergreen that I actually will probably focus most of my pictures from my videos into that in my books on, into Pinterest because Pinterest has a lot of power too. So <clears throat> once you put all that craziness that I just talked to you guys about together, then you just have to make your book quality content, right? You want to reverse engineer it. But the book has the luxury of getting hit by, you know, ghost writers and editors and then more editors and then the final revision before it finally gets published. Okay. So that's fine. But I want my YouTube videos to be good because, well, I've just spent too much time <laughs> watching other people's YouTube videos and trying to create great YouTube videos that I want the quality of the content to be that next level like this. This is cool, but there's next level stuff that I can do. And I should be definitely focusing on siloing my YouTube channels so that I know, you know, how, to, how I'm ranking for these things and getting views. But at the same point, the things that are gonna make me the most money are my course, right? My book and my website. And then my YouTube and my podcast, I should, I should definitely be putting out the content, but I could just be creating content that sells my book, my course, and my website. So these are the things you want to think about, but I, I like the idea of just making the incredible content on video, right? And then sending it everywhere, transcribing it to, and putting the audio from my videos into podcasts, and then transcribing each video that I make. So like for my book, what I would do is I, I outline each chapter, right? Each chapter is going to have a title and a basic idea, you know, for it. And once I have the idea, I'm either going to record it in a pod in a for my podcast with my recording studio because that has really good quality and I can if I record it good enough, I can turn that into a audiobook 
or what I can do is I can just publish the book and then I can pay a, pay a narrator. You know, I'm essentially saving myself 400, 500 bucks to have a professional narrator read it, which might be worth it. But again, I want to get on the field and I don't have that much time because I'm very busy. So I'll probably just have pay somebody to do it. But I also want to put out this video content because the video content is so powerful and I can do all the same things where I take the video, I turn it into a podcast, but if I'm trying to show things on a screen, not so much. But if I'm doing it for a book, then they should all be talking head videos and I should just be really working on keeping the viewer entertained or not really care about the viewer, just put out the content. And then as I'm in between books, I can focus more on making like affiliates, videos that are really high quality or just really high quality for people, things that my audience likes to watch. You know, like I recently discovered a video of mine go crazy on uh, how to make money on YouTube. I mean, and I'm just going all in on my SEO on that video. So I'm thinking maybe from here on out, like I'll put out a lot of content and then the ones that I see do well, I'll invest a lot of SEO stuff into it. But f for the most part, just want to record and get it all out there and then compile it and have it edited and turned into something beautiful that can make me money, which is going to be the book and the courses and things like that. My big dilemma with my courses is like, I don't like holding things back. I want to help people, but I feel like I heard somebody say, you know, tell them once and then they'll still ask They'll, they'll pay you to hear it again. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do that, but I really want to help people. So in my books, I'm just going to lay it all out there as, as clear as I can and make it as high quality as possible. Um, and on my YouTube and my podcast, I'm going to do the same. And then the courses will just be, so there's some real technical stuff that I know how to do that I feel would be fine charging money for because they're so powerful, you know, and that's what I'll probably give, but I really want to help people. So and the real technical stuff is really separates the men from the mice. And there's just not a lot of YouTubers or podcasters that actually give away their best secrets. But I'm definitely going to give away my best secrets in my books. So I think that's my key focus. But all in all, this is going to become a beautiful business. And I'm just so excited. My, my, my question to myself is, do I really want clients though? Or do I want to make this a completely passive business? And I think for the win is completely passive because I have other projects and I have other things that I want to do. Um, but I would like to dabble too in like editing videos, seeing if video editing is a real good business model, seeing if doing SEO for more people is a good business model. But and I just, I get so tired of clients. It's like if somebody pays me money you know, I know I'm going to get results, but it takes time. That's what I've been saying in the beginning. So it's like, maybe I just make it completely passive. And I think that's the goal because the whole goal of Evergreen Creators is to create passive income so that people can live their own life and do what they want. And I think as soon as I have, you know, this system down where it's creating, you know, published books, ebooks, audio books, YouTube videos, podcasts, courses, email, social media pictures, you know, and I have it down to like, okay, I'll put out one piece of content a week that's really high grade, you know, and I can actually record everything from my book and then I can put out the content and then the content can promote the book. You know, these are things that I got to find a balance with, but it's becoming a monster. <laughs> It's just going to become so cool as technology gets better and better. And in theory, I kind of want to uh, make a software that does this for people. So that would be the ultimate evergreen creation is like find creators, make money selling courses, create a cool software where people pay monthly or a lifetime fee or whatever. And then it'll repurpose the content for people. And then this will just become an even more evergreen business. So that would be the ultimate dream of all this. The other ultimate dream would be create a video production company from this, an audio production company and a publishing company, and then put out like movies. Like I've lived a crazy fucking life. I've got war stories. I've got drug stories. I've got, you know, just a very large creativity and imagination. And I have a good tastes. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but I think everybody thinks they have good tastes. <laughs> 
but it'd be pretty fun to make movies but I'm also not a big fan of movies and TV I watch it but only because my girlfriend makes me <laughs> I like to create things though is what I'm trying to get at so so much potential but if I'm learning anything it's that for like the last 10 years I've been working on my art business about art business is just so good right now just madness and it's just proof to me that you know if you're passionate about what you do you have a good system you get better at the system you put in the work it's just like I'm gonna bet all in on myself and I'm gonna take over and the final thing that I'm excited about is audiobooks so my thing thinking about audiobooks is I buy audiobooks like crazy, like gangbusters, because when I'm making my art, when I'm doing a lot of driving around, and when I'm at the gym, I listen to audiobooks. I used to only listen to music. Music was so important to my life for so long. Now it's just audiobooks. So this is like an opportunity to create something that I'm already buying, you know? So I have the problem of being a snob, but I have also the, the ability to look at it as a customer and create great audio content. And the cool thing about audiobooks is uh, there's kind of a blue ocean. There's not, not really. There was a blue ocean like a few years ago. Now it's getting a little more thick. But nothing compared to Amazon books, you know. Self-published books are very hard to uh, make sure that you dominate in. Whereas audiobooks, there's still plenty of room for growth. Like tons of room. Just like podcasts. Tons of room for growth because people... Uh, or focus on other stuff, I guess. But the idea that I can make audiobooks gets me super excited because podcasting, really like music and rapping and just like playing music is what I did for quite a few number of years. I was with multiple bands and it was what I did all the time, but I didn't like the uh, I didn't like the lifestyle of getting wasted every night just to make some money. And then I was it just wasn't worth it. It got it got old fast. Especially when you make like 75 bucks and then you get into a fight and people steal your shit. Like crazy things are happening in the nightlife. I'd love to go back to the clubs and hang out with people, but <laughs> I think I gotta be sober. Anyways, music was a huge part of my life. Then podcasting has now become an incredible part of my life. And I, I think the natural progression for me is gonna be audiobooks as well as everything else that I'm doing. That being said, there's lots of potential to make money with audiobooks. What a lot of people are doing is, uh, and you can charge more money for audiobooks too because it has a perceived value that's more. But what I'm trying to get at is I see people creating like really shitty 30 minute audiobooks and they're still making money. So like imagine if I actually, you know, pour myself into some of these incredible audiobooks that I'm gonna make with a publishing team, like, the ideas in my head, the knowledge I have, could just change lives. So there's big pictures, small pictures. The main thing is what I'm trying to get at is that I'm excited about Evergreen Creators. And you should be too. Um, I have a free course on explaining more of what I'm doing and the crazy mad scientist behind everything and how I'm putting it all together. So be sure to check out the link below. It's going to be the Evergreen Creators free course. 